460 years ago, in Geneva, Switzerland, John Calvin preached here in St. Peter's twice on Sundays and twice every day on alternate weeks. Those were the days when the Reformation was in high gear. The Word of God and the precious gospel of grace had been so locked up inside Latin and inside the clerical priesthood that when it began to break out, it shaped Calvin's whole perspective on life and ministry and everything. And so he developed this motto called Post Tenebris Lux, after darkness, light. And for him, that meant profoundly after the darkness of so many centuries of gospel absent church life, breaking through into gospel light and then gospel spreading out to all of Geneva and all of Europe and all of the world to the brightness and the glory of God. Five years before Calvin came here to St. Peter's, he experienced a dramatic conversion in his early 20s. The conversion happened through an encounter with the majesty of God mediated through the majesty of the Word. And he devoted 200 sermons to the book of, of Deuteronomy, 159 sermons to the book of, of Job, 353 sermons to the book of Isaiah, 86 sermons to the Corinthian epistles, and so on. You get the idea. When you look at the extent of the 25 years or so that he gave to the exposition of the Word, it's simply phenomenal how consistent and deep he was. city of Geneva, where Calvin ministered for 25 years in the 16th century, was a place of suffering. He was born in 1509 into a world that was harsh and immoral and brutal. There were no antibiotics. There was no surgery for an appendicitis. There was no indoor plumbing, no running water. The immorality in the city was rampant. There was a law in Geneva when Calvin came that you'd only have one mistress and the, the brutality. Imagine getting a letter from a family who, whose son had died because he was burned alive for something you taught him. So Calvin did his ministry, forged his theology in a city of, of suffering and harshness and brutality and immorality. And, and the way he did it was by the daily exposition of the Word of God and light broke out of darkness and gave hope to a suffering people. And that's the way it's been happening ever since with doctrines of the Reformation running and triumphing over the darkness throughout the world through the expository preaching of God's Word. So that's my longing for all of us who preach the Word. Some things change, some things never change. The world that we live in is dramatically different in one sense, culturally, the television, the internet, smartphones, the ministries that many of us are a part of are dramatically different than anything that Calvin ever knew in Geneva. But some things never change. Humans never change, God never changes, the Word of God never changes. And preaching, the essence of preaching, is rooted in God. It's rooted in human beings and the way they are in the image of God. It's rooted in the nature of the Word of God, and therefore, preaching isn't altered by the change in culture. It never becomes dispensable. Jesus said that this gospel will be preached as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. And then at the end, he said, go make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. So this double testimony and teaching feels right at the heart 
of what God is calling me to do. The world needs an authentic testimony from a living voice, and the world needs solid teaching about everything that Jesus brought in to the world. My transition from the regular preaching ministry at Bethlehem to teaching and preaching with a wider scope simply intensifies the importance of desiring God as the megaphone that is put to the lips of my mouth. And so my prayer is that God will guide me and guide desiring God in such a way that with my testimony and my effort to be a faithful teacher in God's church and with desiring God as a, a megaphone for the millions of people that are around the world, God will make it a tremendous impact for His glory. God will exalt His name in my life and in the ministry of desiring God.